Hi everyone and welcome to week 7. We're going to look at evaluation of HRD this week and also a review of the whole of module 2. So in terms of learning outcomes we're uh, looking really into the concept and background of evaluation, its purposes, processes and consideration in evaluation. And the second part of um, this lecture is on um, reviewing module 2. So um, to introduce the topic, evaluation is a relatively young discipline, i.e. and only in recent times it's um, been looked at far more seriously than in the past. Um, it uh, does have a key role to play in the field of HRD in a range of uh, levels. So in terms of um, the national level, up, um, even the whole of Australia, um, organisational, divisional team and individual levels. Uh, you will notice that evaluation is becoming more mentioned. For example, um, workplace health and safety laws are now more nationally focused than they were before. Uh, disaster management processes are more uh, nationally focused than they were before. So uh, that is why the term national is written there. We are um, evaluating on, a, on a, a large scale as well as right down to the individual. So we look at the question of why we do evaluation and um, we note that evaluation is still often lacking or it might be done just as an afterthought. So evaluation is about making judgments of worth, which is a big statement. We'll um, break that down a bit later. Uh, but it is about bigger picture concepts such as a whole of program evaluation and it's based at least partly on the information provided by assessments. So by contrast, assessments are about the gathering, interpreting and describing information about learner achievement. So that could be like a small test if you, for example, um, decide to uh, have some role plays, then and the assessment would be uh, based on your observation perhaps of that, uh, how a person performs in that. Or there might be a short test like a um, a stats kind of test or um, some sort of test of knowledge. So it, assessment can assessments are many and varied. Um, however, they do feed into evaluation. Um, they are essentially smaller items such as tests of achievements. Uh, so evaluation is the big picture. In terms of theory, um, in a, on evaluation, the textbook does give you some definitions on page one seven six. Uh, you'll notice there's some common themes where uh, attempting to make evaluation a, a systematic approach. So it doesn't just hop on at the end of a program and in fact it should be thought about from the very beginning. How is, what are our objectives and how are they going to be measured? Um, it's about outcomes and impact um, for individuals, for organisations, for teams and it's about the uh, practical use of um, of the program. So you know, what is the practical outcome of this? It does have its roots in um, positive-ism, um, a before and after type uh, design. So if you're running, ex running an experiment, um, you measure uh, what a person is can do before that experiment starts. Um, then they might be trained in some way, they might be trained in a computer program or whatever and then afterwards it's measured. So um, it's trying to decide what the program has actually contributed. Uh, in an ideal experiment there's a control group um, who are also measured before and after. So what could you have um, gained just by uh, life experience for example and then the difference is uh, between the experimental and the control group outcomes. What um, what has been achieved. So that was where the idea came from. In reality and in organisations we don't have control groups normally. Um, we, if a program is needed we want to be able to offer it to people and not deny it to some group. Um, so uh, obviously we have to look at something that's perhaps more practical. Constructivism on the other hand focuses on understanding the phenomenon being studied through ongoing and in-depth contact and relationships with those involved. So you could, um, for example, run a series of interviews, in-depth interviews with people who've um, been involved in a HRD program, such as a management training program. Um, 
In reality, we do try and take a more pluralistic view of evaluation, which brings together various viewpoints. So wherever you can, uh, looking at having something quantitative, something that you can measure before and after, um, that can be in terms of needs, what's a person's need, uh, and then at the end was that measured and trying to bring in some qualitative aspects of that, perhaps some graphs, some rating scales, um, some actual learnings can be uh, recorded, assessments can be done, um, but this pluralist view does call for um, both in-depth and um, breadth in evaluation and qualitative and quantitative measures. So after a uh, HRD programs completed, you might in fact run some interviews, um, but also try and gain some more quantitative data, some uh, recorded information on how the, you think the program has changed. Uh, so essentially this approach combines outcome data, what's been achieved, um, and to do that you actually have to have an understanding of HRD processes. Uh, so what is the, what are the needs, um, what sorts of learning um, principles have been applied, and so on. So uh, when you're thinking about outcomes of HRD programs and what to evaluate, of course, they're, those are many and varied. So there's cognitive outcomes. You can assess um, what's been actually learnt, what facts have been learnt, what techniques, procedures or processes. Um, that's easily applied to a computer program. You can readily assess um, what's been learnt. Um, if you're wanting people to learn how to speak assertively, for example, in a management training program, um, that might be more down to, to observation, um, but also the, and knowledge of the, of the facts and the, the, the um, techniques um, that you can use. So what cognitively has been achieved? Then there's more skills, so technical and motor skills. Um, what can someone do differently with their hands? Car wood carving, for example. Um, in, the, in the situation that that's required. Um, effective is uh, more about emotions, uh, so what attitudes have been changed, so if you think about cross-cultural training, um, that's very much about at attitudinal uh, awareness and change. What, what um, prejudices, for example, do we bring with us? Uh, motivation is another one, uh, sometimes um, HRDs uh, can be really focused on that. How how much motivation um, can a person have to change? So if they're wanting to gain a promotion, um, what are the things they need to do? It might be they need to do further study, they might be uh, whatever. So what's, what is the motivation and how can you contribute towards that? Um, what are the reactions? So that's, um, again, the perceptions of the programs. Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Um, what sort of, um, do you remember being asked those sort of questions at the end of a training program? Um, that's just how did you react to it? What did you think about it? Uh, and then looking more um, quantitatively at results. What's the payoff for the participants? The payoff for the organisation? Um, did the participants learn um, you know, what they expected to? And was it worth it, basically? Um, was the length of time worth the outcomes? And then for the organisation, what was gained overall? Uh, return on investment, ROI, is where you compare the direct and the indirect costs with benefits. Uh, so what did it cost in terms of um, perhaps employing a facilitator, um, hiring venue, um, replacing people while they went to the training would be an indirect cost, and then compared to the benefits. So again, that takes a lot of um, thinking through in terms of qualitative and quantitative data. So just looking back to our um, diagram here that we've been using throughout, um, we've already um, talked about um, identifying training needs and objectives, designing and implementing activities, and here we are at the fourth stage, which is evaluating. Um, again, evaluation is a complex process, um, but that's where it fits in. Uh, ideally, once you evaluate the program, that's feeding back perhaps into other needs and objectives, um, or it might feed back to how could you design the activities differently. So it's not really an end in itself as it looks in that diagram. Um, you might like to think about um, 
the purpose of evaluation and especially in terms of um, relevant stakeholders. So for an individual, they might wanting, be wanting in a, um, to obtain a formal qualification to improve their promotion prospects. Um, or a line manager might be wanting something different, um, developing leadership skills, management skills. Um, the HR department looking for more consistency, etc. So just have a look through those um, different examples there. And then the next slide goes on to suggest how you might measure the results. Um, so in terms of the individuals, it could be just the percentage of people who've actually gained a formal qualification, or how well did they do, or was a promotion gained. Um, there could be um, benefits coming through in terms of more sales if you've run um, uh, customer service programs, for example. So um, the point of these couple of slides is saying that it's so um, it's, it's just so diverse what you can actually be looking at within a HRD program. And likewise with evaluation, it has to be tailored to um, what you are actually doing. Again, there's no recipe book here. So um, the purposes of evaluation are to show, uh, are to prove that there's been an improvement. Perhaps it might be to justify the costs, provide evidence of success and reason to continue or not. So if you're in a HRD department, um, of course you're really wanting to show um, improvements and it's hard to do that without um, uh, evaluation, in, in fact it's impossible. So if you're okay. actually uh, wanting um, to put in and bid for um, a program to be run, you need to actually be able to justify it um, and show how you will evaluate it. Obviously all organisations um, ideally want to be looking at quality improvement, um, learning, to improve knowledge, skills and attitudes is a purpose of evaluation. And actually um, controlling can be another purpose um, to ensure that there's consistency. So for example, you might have a nationwide organisation um, with different training centres. So it's making sure that all of them are being effective um, and the outcomes are similarly good across um, different groups. So why should a, prog a HRD program be evaluated? And you'd have lots of ideas about this, but uh, obviously it would be to identify a program's strengths and weaknesses. So where does it need to be improved? Uh, determine whether the program, be it content, organisation, administration, um, contributed to learning and, and learning transfer back on to the job. So did it contribute to those things and which which aspects actually pulled their weight. Um, I, you might like to identify which trainees benefited most. Uh, so for example, you might be trying to work out did, pro, did some um, participants need more preparation um, or was it too easy for some, etc. Uh, also, you need to always be thinking in HRD of how you might be needing to market your programs. So if they're successful, that obviously helps you in um, in generating further um, programs down the track. Um, cost benefit analysis is another important way of thinking about evaluation. Um, what are the financial benefits and the costs of the program? Um, think about how that might be compared with other investments. For example, uh, a heavy uh, investment in marketing. Um, and again, that gets back to needs. Uh, you can compare the costs and benefits of different HRD programs. So sending people off off-site um, in a very intensive program would obviously be costly, but it might have a greater benefit than an in-house program that just runs for a little a couple of hours. And you can try and determine the best program. So in HRD, it's really important to be aware of these issues. Um, just some terms you will come across in this area. Um, formative evaluation takes place prior to the program being conducted. Um, that is, during the design and development phase. Um, you might get feedback from others um, about what you're thinking about doing. Uh, doing research into what's been best practice, what's worked in the past. Um, you might like to do some pilot testing, um, which is a method of formative evaluation. So you might be uh, running out a series of uh, role plays 
and you would ask people to actually, for volunteers to actually um, try those out ahead of time. So getting feedback um, on your um, programs is very important. And then at the other end is summative evaluation, um, determining the extent of change and learning from the overall program. Um, you may have detailed assessments as you go through in terms of um, achievement. Um, this can also be conceptualised as return on investment um, for the organisation that hosted the program and that links back to the cost-benefit analysis that I mentioned earlier. We can have a look at the Kirkpatrick model now um, to give us an idea of um, where to start. Uh, so you'll see here um, the, the um, ideas that have already been mentioned and this is the um, Kirkpatrick framework. So the reaction we talked about um, as being how do people feel about um, the, uh, the training program. The learning is actually what can be measured. So this relates more to assessment. Um, in the assessment of the role play activities, um, what did you observe? Um, what can be written down about that and measured about that. The behaviour now links back to um, what actually happens in the workplace. Uh, so this is um, aligned to the idea of transfer of learning. Did it in two weeks' time? Um, is is has is the person able to uh, use the learning that they've um, that they've gained? And level four is about results, something more tangible, really the effects of changes in performance or measurable results at work. And this might be quite long term, so uh, might be about uh, in improvement in um, uh, sales or it could be about um, other costs, reduction in costs, um, reduction in complaints could be a, um, uh, a result, um, improvement in evaluation by customers. Uh, is, they're all actual results, something that can be measured and it, that can be uh, long term. So just to think about that again, Kirkpatrick's model of evaluation, it has for the four phases. Reactions, and these are the most commonly measured, and we'll look at an example um, on the next page. Um, of course with reactions you wonder about the validity, you know, are people really reflecting on how good was the afternoon tea or, you know, that's relevant, but um, was it really about the learning that took place? Um, so, well, you know, what are the validity? Sorry, the reaction to uh, what are they actually showing? Are they uh, they're just like happy sheets, which are relevant, but how valid are they? So the learning does require more formal assessment and can involve pre-test and pro and post-test. So what do you know ahead of time? versus what happens afterwards. So that can all be rolled into evaluation. Um, as I mentioned, behaviour, the changes at work, uh, issues to do with transfer, uh, you know, uh, have you got a supportive environment to go back with your training, and then the results, business focused, overall business success. So that's just summing up really um, the previous slide, and this is saying, uh, this next slide is talking about reaction. So. Um, making the point that um, a lot of programs are just evaluated according to reaction. Did you like it? What did you think about it? How did you feel about it? That sort of thing. Um, and there's less emphasis on uh, as you go on. So less emphasis on return on investment, for example, which is down there. Uh, very low on this graph at 3%. So, um, and even results and behaviours, the actual learnings aren't even that well recorded. So happy sheets, fine, uh, reactions good, but we need to really um, drill down a lot more deeply into evaluation. Um, this is a, um, a reaction type of um, questionnaire, just to give you an idea. Um, how did you rate the content of the program, one to four? How did you rate the facilitator? handouts, the venue, the catering, um, and were the overall objectives met. So really that's not much more than reactions. You need to go deeper than that to actually find out the learning that occurred, so through assessments, uh, etc. Um, if you're looking at the third level of Kirkpatrick, which is transfer, uh, you actually have to go back and maybe um, measure 
uh, interview, whatever, in, in two weeks' time, six months' time, or bring the class back together to really uh, discover what transfer has occurred or um, find out from uh, peers or managers or whatever. So this is very much at that first um, level of um, the Kirkpatrick model, reactions. So the criticisms are um, it's important um, that evaluation should begin before the first stage. So in other words, when you're um, looking at your needs analysis, designing your program, you should also be thinking about evaluation. And some um, people have said that uh, this is kind of overlooked on the Kirkpatrick model. Uh, there's a, an example in your textbook, um, the CIRO model, C-I-R-O, which actually considers the context in which the training is taking place. So um, every organisation has a context. Um, if you might, you might be doing uh, some workshops on uh, values within the organisation, for example. So that's obviously going to have a different type of evaluation than something that's learning a computer program. Um, the quality of the resources is really important um, and the cost to the organisation. So in other words, um, Kirkpatrick does give a, a skeleton framework and it needs to be um, just thought of a little bit more deeply. Um, and also um, other critics have said that evaluation should go through, go beyond the final stage. So in that uh, model it looks like, okay, that's the end of it. Um, but, you know, there are benefits to society, or there should be from HRD. Um, so if people have um, more positive attitudes in the workplace, um, then that will spill out into society and is a benefit. Um, so evaluation is, is complex. It's not always based on rational human decision making, um, as the Kirkpatrick model might indicate. So in other words, there's some. Uh, it's much more nuanced than it than comes across in that uh, model. Uh, this is an example of um, an evaluation model, the RoMEF model, and this one's actually uh, tries to capture the bigger picture as evaluation does. Um, and it's actually been used in Australia in um, federal and state education departments to review and position and frame interventions. Um, so you can follow the Romanoff model through there, RoMEF model, and look at the, um, the way they've set it up, the rationale, the objectives, of course they'd be smart, um, the appraisal, the costs, the benefits, the risks, the implementation, the monitoring's there in the same way as we've talked about um, design and delivery. Um, they honed in on needing, um, you know, accurate data and understanding the inputs such as costs, um, progress reports, and then they've got evaluation. Um, so what happened versus expectations, and what do they think would have happened if there'd been no intervention and feedback to, to stakeholders. So this is an example of an evaluation model that, that has been used. Um, Evaluations just look like a small part of that model. Um, so it's important for us to keep in mind that evaluation would be there at each phase, hopefully. So the rationale um, for the program even would lead into talking about objectives and therefore about evaluation. So how are you going to actually know if you've been successful? Uh, so it, do, it does feed into every phase. So um, just thinking about other considerations, um, the reading for this week discusses alternative ways of looking at evaluation. And there's an emphasis in the literature on the, on the stakeholders. Who um, is the evaluation taking place for? Is it to benefit participants primarily? Uh, is it to uh, prove that the, organiser, that the um, HRD intervention has been successful? Um, so it really does have to have many perspectives and the return on the investment obviously is an important aspect. Um, so you do need good understanding of the direct costs such as the cost of the trainer um, and the indirect costs such as um, employees being away from work, the costs of that um, in terms of um, perhaps orders or those sorts of things and the outcomes and the benefits. Uh, so evaluation um, it is important to make sure um, that the tools and techniques chosen are most appropriate for the organisation. Um, so in other words, we need to consider our context, which you would in HRD. You've got to 
obviously be aware of um, what sort of organisation you're in, um, how do you actually promote your HRD programs, how are they implemented, and um, one of the um, consistent themes is HRD, in HRD, is the need to align HRD with um, organisational values and strategies so that HRD doesn't sit out by itself as a like some sort of independent little body that, that flies around, but it, it needs to be um, uh, working together with the, uh, the higher management structures. So in terms of an overview, um, HRD uh, operates at many levels, national, organisational, divisional, team and individual, so it's relevant in different levels. It is the bigger picture, that is, it incorporates in assessments but goes beyond that. Um, it's more pragmatic and has to be more pluralist than experimental approaches. Um, the data can be collected for a variety of purposes. Um, emphasise the four-level Kirkpatrick model um, and the, the importance of considering stakeholders. So what's the context? Who are we thinking of when we um, set up a HRD program? need to think about the strategic objectives of the organisation and this clip is actually um, on the front of this particular week's um, as an activity so it gives an overview of evaluation. Uh, that's the overview of Kirkpatrick's uh, four level framework by way of um, summary. Uh, we're going to briefly now talk about the review of the module and as you know week, module three starts in week eight. We look there more at applications of HRD as well as case analysis. So the module, um, taking you back to week four, there's many definitions of learning. So knowledge creating process via transforming experiences. We talked there about the Kolb cycle, uh, the importance of um, activities and knowledge and skills and insight processes, the importance of reflecting on the um, activities that we do in a training program. Um, many learning theories and we looked at three in particular. Behavioural approach, um, the cognitive approach including experiential learning and uh, we did note that Bart, uh, part and VARC are learning styles um, that aren't theories, they are just a sub part of that and we looked at social and socio-cultural theories. Um, so it is important to understand these theories um, when we're designing HRD interventions. Um, so in terms of design and learning, we, we identify the needs, we then deliver and evaluate um, our program, we think about costs and we think about the context of the organisation. When we're identifying needs, is there a need or not? What are the gaps in performance? And then um, we design based on our knowledge of design principles, on our knowledge of the needs of the organisation and its context, and making sure that the skills can transfer back to the job. Um, the objective, objectives need to be focused on the learner and smart, specific, measurable, achievable, uh, etc. And the methods we talked about can be grouped in different ways. Um, on the job, off the job, coaching, mentoring, different different ways that they're grouped. Uh, and there's a lot of those um, outlined in the textbook along with strengths and weaknesses of them. Uh, whatever you use, it does need to be logically linked to the overall aims and objectives of the HRD program. And finally this week we looked at evaluation, um, making judgments of worth based partly on information provided by the assessment process. The Kirkpatrick model offers a four level approach which we've um, discussed and it's important that we uh, use actual assessments to feed into that. Um, it's essential in terms of improving HRD over time, um, making it, uh, giving it prominence and promoting it within an organisation and understanding the costs and benefits ourselves. Um, HRD processes need to be logical and include all the aspects, so needs identification, design and delivery and evaluation and the costs. So that's what we attempt to do in that uh, second assignment that's coming up. Thanks very much.